Hello and good evening. I can see we've got a couple of people in. Valerie Holmes. Hiya. I hope you're alright. Uh, Jean and Valerie Jackson. Hiya you two. Hope you're doing well. Oh, we've got 12 in all of a sudden. Where did you all come from? Um, hiya Valerie. Hiya Vicky. Sharon, hiya. I need to sort out your prize for last week, uh, Vicky. Hi, Aileen, Pauline, and four other people, whoever you are. Hi, Hazel, how are you doing? Not seen you for a long, long time. God, I hope this ends soon so they can all get out. It's getting me down now. Hi, everyone. Right, there's 20 odd of you in, so I will get straight on with it. Um, it's pretty chilly tonight, so first of all, get things right. Cheers, everyone. Here's my gin and tonic. I do have, like to have a drink with you on a Tuesday evening. Hi, Leanne. Hi, Marilyn. Oh, that's better. Right. First of all, I'll show you some of the things that I finished. This was the whip bag that I was doing on Friday. Um, want to visit it. So I know, I know. It's terrible, isn't it? Jill Sandal saying she hopes everyone's doing great. Um quite a few of you in tonight. Hi uh, Yvonne, Sharon's mum. Uh, Lee, Leanne saying hello everyone. Hi Sarah. Hi, are you still in um, Lanzarote Patricia? Hi <laughs> Rita. Right so yeah I did the um, whip storage bag on Friday which Friday was a new Facebook live uh, which is going to be a little bit different. What are you on Jean? Jean's on Guinness. Ooh nice bit of Guinness. Matt likes Guinness. Hi Kayleigh, I hope you're feeling better. So I think everybody said hello to everybody else. No, back to the very, oh poor Patricia, you've had to come back and join us. And we were all going to come out and see you in his dreams. So I, I did this on Friday, which as I said was a new uh, Facebook Live while uh, this Covid business is still on. And we said we was going to do a sweatshirt sew along next week. So I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. Nice way to spend a quiet birthday. Is it your birthday, Sarah? If it is, happy birthday. You've got to have a quiet birthday. You can't have any other, can you? Um, so yeah, I was a little bit disappointed that I put this fabric on the wrong way. I wanted the... That fabric showing on that side. Jill Sandal saying happy birthday so uh, I think that's meant for you Sarah. I hope you have a good evening and make the best of it that you can because next year let's hope it's all different. So I did the interior as well I didn't show you that so that's got two pockets although saying that I haven't separated it. The reason for that being I have the applique tools for doing my applique and they are quite long so if I ever wanted to take them with me I could take this as a flat pack and put those in and they'd be nice and um, nice and safe so I put the rainbow strap on the back and just put some ribbon down as I did with the handle just to make them all matching so that's that one finished and I haven't filled it yet I'm sure it's gonna get full I took my other one with me today and uh, let me show you where have I put it it's over there I'll, I'll show you it later so I finished that and I finished my retreat notebook in the same fabrics. I think I showed you that, so that's all ready. So bring the retreats on. Is it possible to purchase the pattern only for... Yes, it is, Heather. Also, while we're on that subject, I've also released the um, needle book um, thread storage keeper as pattern only. I know a lot of you have got stashes of fabric like mine, so... If you go onto the website, there is quite a few on there. If anybody's wanting anything else as a pattern only, let me know and me and Mark will uh, do our best to get it on there ASAP for you. While I'm not doing as much uh, gallivanting, I can do a little bit more work at home. So let us know if there's anything that you're wanting to be just a pattern only. So that was that one. Um, the whip storage bag, I've got, like I said, this is my sixth one of these and I do use them all. Right, I also finished the quilt. Look how thick that is. That's got the lovely fur on the back and it's got fleece in between. 
so I don't know if you can tell just how thick that is but it's so warm not a good one anti got oh no oh Sarah's just saying her auntie got COVID for the second time she's eight, 97 wow hi Angie oh bless her I hope she's gonna be all right um Sarah fingers crossed and little prayer for her the retreat notebook holder please pattern on there i think that's already done but if not i shall do it for you um thank you heather yeah it is lush you know i get curled up with this on the tea and oh, i love it so on the front i did all those panels and i did the um flying geese around it and i quilted it on the embroidery machine if you might be able to see some of the markings that i put on when i did it by ruler work then i've changed my mind and unpicked it all. Hiya Diane, hiya Anne, and uh, ended up doing it on the embroidery machine. That's the way I've been doing it. You can see it's got all quilt patterns on this one and bobbin threads and things. Um, thank you, Christine, thank you. But yeah, it is lovely and warm with the, um, if you if you get cold, Angie, let me know and I'll certainly make you one. I made our Andrew one um, that's our brother who lives in Ireland and he lives on his own in a very, very cold place with no central eating. So I made him one, obviously not with sewing machines on, but with the fleece and the fur and he says it is so warm. So at least I know I've helped him out a bit. So I finished the, the quilt, that's going back up with me to the house. It's only the size of a lap quilt, but really enjoyed doing that. Um, quickly talk about some English paper piecing. I've also put these on the website, which are this sewing, this made with love fabrics. I missed that. <laughs> yes, please. No problem, Angie. I can do that for you. I'll, my sister Angie is into horses. She works with horses as well. So I'll try and get something horse related for you. There is also a cushion coming your way. Desmond the donkey's finished, but I've took him up to the house. So these are the English paper piecing in one inch across. That's where they measure it from the top of the um, hexagon there uh, in pink and blue. And I've sewn together quite a few of them. Oops, that was stuck on the back. So there's 50 in a pack. Um, these have been put on the website. Now this lot together and what I've got left here is the 50. So you can gauge um, round about how big that will be but I'm wanting to make some little pouches with this so I just think something like this is nice to have on the go just take it in your little whip storage bag and uh, you've always got something to do so they've been added to the website that's those uh, I finished the album for my daughter Kira with her family now I know I showed you a lot of this so I'm not going to show you at all I just got to show you this one picture of my granddaughter bless her <laughs> she's such a character that's the uh, two together there but the one picture is at the back because I hadn't finished it last week when I showed it this is one I wanted you to see as well that's typical of my little grandson Malachi with his finger up his nose I've been making loads of range and half it yeah uh, Helen, I love doing that as well. Did you receive your prize, by the way, Helen? Um, that's been posted out. I love doing it as well. So that's little Malachi in there. But the other one that I wanted to show you, so funny. <laughs> she got into her mum's makeup. <laughs> she looks like an umpa loompa. <laughs> they are cute as a button, but um, hiya, Janet, no problem. You remember our um, Isla, don't you? That's Isla when she got into her mum's makeup. Oh, thank you, Ellen. I'm glad you enjoy it. So uh, that's our little Isla with her makeup on, all ready to go out. <laughs> Bless her. So that's all ready to go and stay at Kira's house. I've been quite busy. I have been busy. What we're going to do tonight, I'll tell you what we're going to do tonight before I move on. We're going to make these pouches and I'm going to show you how to make them in any size Jackie's saying uh, hello everyone don't you love them? I do love them I love them very very much and I wish I could see them more unfortunately we have to do FaceTime but it's better than nothing and I'm grateful for that you know if you think about it 20 years ago we wouldn't have been able to see them at all so I am grateful for the, the um, 
technology we've got these days because it's making it a lot easier. We're tackling the emergency education dean, no, not calling it home school as parents are generally prepared for that. Oh dear Kayleigh, I know, I know. Uh, evening Cheryl. Um, so this is the teeny tiny one, I've just finished this one. They are lined but it's, it's a very easy way to line it and basically you can use up all your scraps of your nice fabrics um, in a very easy way. So this one, this is the type of thing I use them for. This has got some pins in and I just store my pattern weights in here and it just keeps them all together. So I'm going to show you how to make them and this one is a got two different sizes in it might even have three so you can actually do them oh it has look it's got a little baby one you can even do them in uh, stacking sizes so that's what we're going to be doing tonight but i wanted to talk to you about friday because we're going to do the sweatshirt and i'm going to tell you what sort of thing you're going to need i'm aware that a lot of you probably won't get the pattern finished I yes, definitely excuse me they won't get the pattern finished and the sweatshirt as well but you will be able to go back on um, YouTube and watch it back so if you learn how to do the pattern and you manage to get that done that's brilliant because I plan to while people are catching up I plan to do some different variations to show you how to um, change what you've got by making it in blocks and maybe changing the sleeves, um, stuff like that. So how to add a pocket, you know, like one of those front pockets. So what you're gonna need is some rib, either a contrasting one or one that matches your sweatshirt. Now I've washed mine, so mine's ready to go and I've got the rib to match. Don't worry if you haven't got it the same. If you want to, you can use sweatshirt to add as your cuffs and everything it just doesn't stretch as much so you have to make an, an allowance for that um, but this is what we're going to be using on Friday to make our sweatshirt so you need your fabric if you've got one try and get hold of a French curve of some sort that will make making the pattern a lot easier um, once you've made this pattern and I'll show you how to alter it to do different styles you'll be able to make lots more. So get yourself some pattern paper. I get mine from um, Eastman Staples on a ginormous roll, but you can buy it in smaller quantities. So, or tape together some paper. You don't have to go out and buy anything if you can't, don't worry about it. I always store papers from, you know, whatever, and just keep them for cutting out. So get some paper of some sort and you're going to need paper scissors, marker pen, pencil, fabric marker pen, French ruler and your machine and that's about it. So that's what you're going to need for Friday. So I'll go through it again. Pattern paper, French curve, marker pen, pencil, these are basically stuff you've got in your stash. Fabric marker pen, paper scissors and your normal scissors and obviously your fabrics. If you have got a cutting machine and you want to cut something out to go on it, I think I'm going to do that as well. Hiya Cassandra. So I'm going to show you how I would cut out on the scan and cut with vinyl, heat t HTV, heat transfer vinyl. And um, I'm going to put something on mine. Hi, Rosemary. Um, so that's all that. Now, the next thing I've been doing this week is I made a journal, a sewing journal. Well, basically, it's a diary, but it's like a planner. Um, so I went on Amazon and I bought these pages. Happy New Year to you, work, Sandra. So these papers, I just put in A5 Diary um, 2021 and these came up on um, Amazon. So I bought that. 
And then all these pictures here are what I've had from um, either magazines or calendars over the um, years and I saved them all. And what I've done is I've made a cover for the front here and I'll tell you what it says. It says, I'm a material girl. And then in this little one here it says, my husband said he'd leave me if I bought any more fabric. And then it says, I'm really going to miss that man. So I've just put like quotes and things in it inside how many fat quarters do I need for a quilt? And it tells you how many do you need for a king king size quilt. A safe bet is 56, but you need at least 42. A queen, 35, at least 30. And down to a cot, which is 12, at least eight. So I've, I've tried to keep information like that on hand. And then some more pattern pictures. Um, from a fat quarter, what will you get? You'll get 99 two inch squares, 56 two and a half inch squares, uh, six, six and a half inch squares and things like that. Then all my personal details. So all the way through, it's got things like uh, what what to do with an A5 square. It's got calendars and I've put how to choose colors, things like that in. Life isn't perfect, but at least my pattern matching is. Just things that I like uh, to do with um, sewing and things like that then my normal pictures and I've got a pack of stickers that I got from Simplicity and these have got stickers ribbon borders and all sorts of things so I'm going to have quite a bit of fun with that through the year and then next year I can just I'll put them in a ring in the rings next year I can just undo these and buy a new refill keep the pictures if I want to or add to it and I've got a diary ready for next year. So I'm looking forward to starting that. And one more thing to show you, and then we're gonna get on with making this pattern. I've just finished, in fact, one's still on the machine. I wanted some towels for our downstairs loo. Uh, oh, I nearly forgot to join you. I made the Bobby wallet yesterday, so quick and easy to make. Well done, Lily. It is, and it's a nice one as well. I use mine. Um, just remember that, people. And I'm not going to say any more about that at the moment. This says welcome. Um, and I just wanted some towels for my downstairs loo. So I've done a couple. I've got some cotton binding. And I'm going to bind the edges and put a hanging loop on there. And we've got some nice new towels for our downstairs loo. Uh so I may do that if there's time. If not, never mind. I'm going to hire you up so you can see the cutting table. And then I am going to show you how I would go around doing this pattern. Right. Can we see all right there? No. <laughs> can we now? Yes. You can see me, Jane. Looks massive. If I've missed anything, please um, don't be shy, let me know, and I'll try and catch up with things. Right, I'm just going to cut some of this paper off. I need some pattern paper. Actually, I've got some freezer paper. Freezer paper also makes a really good uh, thing for small patterns. It's really useful. So, what I'm going to do is... I'm going to get my pattern where it's going to start to hold my paper down. So, when I made the um, whip storage bag, I told you I quilted this fabric from uh, Tula Pink and I had quite a bit left over. Um, I actually did more than I needed just so I would be able to make things like this. So, it's a directional print. But I'm going to show you how to get around that. So that's what I'm using. And I'm going to do some of the Tula Pink line works for the uh, lining of it. You need to make, I was telling you last week, any size. Um, it's not really an oval because we're going to elongate it. But you need a rounded top if you're going to make it like that. You could make a square top, obviously. So what I'm going to do, first of all, is I'm going to decide how wide I want it. And I'm not going to do it tiny because it'll be easier to show. I've got a nice purple one here. Why use a brown pen when you can use a purple pen? 
So I'm going to do it about nine inches on the bottom. So I've just drawn a line nine inches long. Actually, I'm going to draw a line at four and a half, so I know that's half of that. So 4.5, I've drawn a line, and I'm going to use the fringe curve because it's a bit he easier to handle. So if I line up my line across with the lines across on that ruler, I know that that's straight, and I draw a line directly upwards from that halfway. I'm not sure if you can see that, so I'll just hold it up. So that's the baseline and that's the halfway line. So what I can do now is this circle has got a line across the bottom part of this. So I'm lining that up to make sure it's straight, it's, it's level. And I'm just gonna do the curved part on that. And I'm going to take my ruler, I'll just quickly show you, so you can see I've got the curve at the top. And I'm going to line up the bottom, that's to make, that, to make sure that's straight. And do that up so it reaches. Same at the other side. So I know I've got straight sides. So that's giving me like an oval. And that's done with just tools that I've got around the uh, room. I didn't have what I needed, so that will do nicely. I keep a rotary cutter for cutting out paper, just to make it that bit easier. So it's a bit higher actually, I'm gonna lower it a bit. So I'm just gonna bring that down a little bit. I don't want it as tall as that. So I'm just gonna bring this end down. You'll see when I, it still reaches those sides. So it was a little bit too tall, so I've just brought it down a little bit. You'll know whatever you're wanting to use it for. So now I'm just going to cut around the edge. So any size you want, one of these little pouches, you can do it like this. And that's all you need. So you can have them in lots and lots of different sizes. Right, so that's my pattern piece. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut my lining out first. Because this is in um, a directional print, the, the, excuse me, the outer, I can do my lining in one piece, but my inner, I'm going to have to stitch it to make sure that the, um, to make sure that the pieces are looking correct from both sides. So I'm just bringing this down till I hit the fold. So I'll put that against the fold of the fabric and I'm going to cut around with my rotary cutter. It is still quite sharp for fabric, so it's not a problem. But I do use this one for paper. And then I need a little bit of this for binding. So I'm going to cut two and a quarter inch binding as long as I can get it within this bit here just a straight bit got all them straggly bits left so see how long I can get it for two and a quarter inches hope it's long enough. Right, so that's my binding. Right, so when I open that out, you can see it's like, um, like an egg shape, but with the same um, curve at top and bottom. So what I need to do is I need to cut that out twice, but with a seam allowance along the bottom so that I can join these and it will be the same size as that when it's joined. So whatever seam allowance you want to use, basically, you can use and you can see through your paper so what I'm going to do is I'm going to look so that I can get my picture 
where I want it and there's two peacocks together here so I'm going to try and get them centrally so I'm going to place that line that I've got down the centre in the middle of here between them make sure they're going to be centred on there remember that this bit's going to go underneath so I want it quite near the top but not too near because I need the seam allowance for my zip and I need to leave I'm going to leave about a centimetre seam allowance on the bottom here but this time I'm going to use I'm going to use my small ruler so I'm going to add the seam allowance if you want to add this to another piece you could do and have one of the main one of the um, lining this would be a lining but if you do that um, just remember to say that it's a seam allowance and you don't need to do it if you're going to have um, the same fabric or an undirectional fabric sorry so that's about a centimetre That straight and then I'll do the curve. So I'm just turn it around so it's not joined on. So this is already quilted, as you can see. So we've got the lovely peacocks in the middle and I'm going to now place another piece for the back Let's see if I can get this one binding I'm not too bothered about both sides being although that's not too bad it's a bit low down but you might just see the heads of peacocks so I'm going to do this load out, I'm trying to get as much, as much out of the fabric as I can. So I'm just going to draw around that curve. Oh, we've still got all that fabric left, so that's brilliant. I've got my two pieces here. I've got my lining and my binding. So I am going to take it over to the machine. I'm going to try my Janome tonight to see if I can stitch with my lights on. So please let me know if it's um, too bright and I will swap it. Or turn the light, oh, I can't turn the lights out on this one. Let's see what it's like. Right, so I'm just putting you back and I'm gonna have to drop the height down because you're very high. So this is the Genome Horizon. And I mean, I'll just press my binding on my lining. Does that look like it's going to be too bright? Just move you around a bit. Oops, sorry if I'm making you dizzy. I just thought you might be able to see better here. And I'm going to fold my binding in half along the length and press that together. Right, are we ready for the competition before I start doing this? <laughs> Pass these fingers first, get ready. Hi Jude. Right, get ready. The competition tonight is going to be very easy and I want you to name the last pattern that I released on a chander, which was um, the 22nd of December. What was that pattern called? So fastest fingers first. Don't worry, Jude. Better late than never. It's lovely to see you. Right, I'm going to watch to see who's the first one. What was the name of the pattern that I released? Bobby Wally. Well done, Kaylee. <laughs> that was quick. Well done, Lynn. But Kaylee, bet you to it. If people can give me ideas for questions for um, for these these on a 
uh, for a uh, Tuesday night. We're only doing a question on a Tuesday. Please let me know. Right, so this is the Genome Horizon. Uh, brilliant machine, absolutely love it. Uh, it's a workhorse. I've had this since 2014 and I've never had any problems with it whatsoever. Thread needle, no, it was after the thread needle keeper, Sarah. That was before then. It was the Bobby Wallet, so uh, Kaylee was right. And it's great to make. Thank you, Ellen. I'm glad you've enjoyed it. I've made a lot of them. Right, so I'm just going to stitch a centimetre across the bottom of this to make it the same size as the um, lining. What do we think about the lights? Are we all right with it? Done. I'm just going to press it. <laughs> Kaylee is speedy. You were quick though, Lynn. <laughs> I'm just going to see back to my phone just to see if uh, everything's all right. Ah, Sharon's gave me a good one. Gosh, I don't even know that. That's next week, Sharon. Thank you. The text message was from Sharon giving me a clue what to ask. Lights are fine. Thank, thank you, everyone. So this is probably the machine I'm going to be using for my um, lives. I can't put this down because I'm using my Oracle thread and it's one of those big uh, th size threads. And with this machine, you can get um, an extension for it and you have to have this in. So I can't put my lid down. And I know I can see the light shining off that, but um, it's not too bad. Good one, Sharon. Thank you. Right, so I'm just going to give this a press open and I'll make sure it's the same height so so that was the ones I wanted to be intentionally central and they were the lower ones which are not totally central but at least we've got full pictures I'm quite happy with that well done, Kaylee. You were quick. She's young, that's why. When I put that on there now, you can see that it's the same size um, because I've got that seam down the middle on there. Is that another th uh, thing from Sharon? Well, my iPhone's not backed up. Right, so what we need to do now is, and I'll do it on the lining first, fold it in half. and we need to add our gusset. So it doesn't want to be totally straight, but it doesn't really matter. The easiest way to do it is to do it straight. I'm going to do, I'm gonna get my pen. I don't want to take it back over to the cutting table, so I'll do it with my scissors. So I will draw it. So I'm gonna do a 1.5 inch square and if I put my line into the inside, I should be able to see a little bit better. Right, so I've got my piece in half. I'm going to put 1.5 inch square and draw that out at that side and do the same at the other side. I was going to release this as a pattern, but it's very similar to the clam up patterns. And I don't want to step on anyone's toes, but it's a very easy pattern to do. So now you can see I've got those cutouts there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut. I would normally do it with my rotary cutter on the desk, but I'm going to do it by with my scissors along there and there open it out and you can see I've got that cut out in between Patricia I was born sewing um, no not really um, I, I tell a lie 
I was born being creative. I loved sewing. No problem, Sandy, don't worry about it. And um, I got, I was very into my dolls. Um, I'm a very maternal person and I, I always loved dolls. My other two sisters were into horses and things like that, but I was always into my dolls. I can't even remember them ever playing with dolls. And I used to get my Cindy dolls and my um, Barbie dolls and I used to make clothes for them. Not sewn clothes, um, but I used to sew by hand just to help uh, sew them up to get them on. Um, they, they were very crude, but I just loved making clothes. A lot of them were just like full circle skirts with a little circle in the middle and they could s slip on. Um, and when I got to, I think about 12 or 13, my mum and dad asked me what I wanted for Christmas or birthday, I can't remember which, and I said a sewing machine. So they bought me um, a second hand sewing machine in case I, I didn't like it. And it was just one that went forwards and backwards, didn't even do zigzags. But oh boy, did I love that machine. And I think within maybe a year, two years, I bought one on HP. I obviously wasn't working, I was only a youngster, but I used to pay my dad and mum and they used to pay it for me. And I had that machine, it was a new home. I had that machine for probably 25 years and I absolutely loved it and it was still working then. But sewing has always been a passion that I've had. I've, I've made my own, I've been married twice, made my own wedding dresses both times, made the bridesmaid dresses um, both times. And I, I just prefer to make anything I can myself, but it's not just in sewing. I had an older brother, so I was a tomboy. <laughs> I had two old, well, a older and a younger brother, but they had action men. So <laughs> I used to pinch their action men to go on dates with Barbie and Cindy. <laughs> My, my brothers didn't like that, no. Right, <laughs> reminiscing here. So I'm just placing that on top now. And what I'm going to do is, where that is cut out, I'm going to do the same on the outer. So I'm just going to lay it down, line it all up nicely and get that cut out. Yeah, I like anything creative. The uh, great pottery throw downs back on and I'm in my elements. I'm going to have to get my potter's wheel out. I think my hands will be able to do it now. I stopped for a few years because of my uh, operations, but I think I'm able to uh, give it a go now. Forgot to fetch those um, x-rays down for you. Right, so now you can see I've got the um, pieces matching. What I need to do now is get my zip. New Home was my first machine also. New Home is um, Janome now, so it was a good make, definitely. Oh, I did love it though. But you know how most people start out making little pouches and things. My first thing was my mum and dad went to, um, what used to go out on a Saturday night and I made a blouse out from one that I had. Um, the only thing I didn't do was add a seam allowance. So it was too small, but it had all pin tucks down the front. And when I think back, I was amazed that, you know, I even had gave it a go, but I never thought anything of it. I used to make something on a Friday night to go out with. I couldn't afford to go and buy stuff, so I made them. Right, I put my zip on. Obviously, I'm using my rainbow zip because I love it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap my foot on my zipper foot. On this machine, you see these here, these six dials here, that's a way of moving your needle um, without having to click, click, click. So I can move it to the left with one click. I can move it to a quarter of an inch. Um, I can move it to a, a middle position, a right position, just by the click of one button, which is what I really like. I have two old, you know me, one never been used. It was given to me. Have you said, how many machines have you got, Sarah? My first sewing machine was a single treadle. Well, if you look at this, I'll just turn you around. I don't know if you can see. This is a singer treadle. It's still got the treadle on, if you can see down there. Um, and the machine is inside. I will get it out one day and show you. It's a beautiful machine. Absolutely stunning. Right, I'll put you back where you were. Right, so now what we're going to do is... 
I'm going to stitch on the right side, not on the wrong side, Ali. And I can actually pull that out of the way because I don't need to pull it back until we've actually stitched it. So I'm going to place the zip. In fact, before I do that, I'm going to stitch over this end so that I know it's not going to um, undo. I don't want my zip slider to pull off. Just a bit of um, insurance. So I'm just going to go over the zip and then back. And take that off. So I better get plenty of a nice quilt for my sister. Right, so what I'm going to do is put it face down about an inch, an inch and a half. If you've got plenty of zip and you're, you're a bit nervous, do it longer. Start a bit further up. Um, I'm going to put it against the edge and I'm going to stitch down the middle with the zipper foot. I don't know what I've done with my um, stiletto, so I'm going to be using this one. That's the same as the one I had. Really? Oh, wow. They're beautiful though, aren't they? They just don't make them like that. I am going to, I want to put, do all the woodwork again on it. It's quite damaged. So I would love to spend time bringing it back up to what it should be looking like. Yeah, they're beautiful machines. Don't worry, if your lining comes out, you can always trim it down. When you get to the end, cut your threads, take it out. And you can see here, I've got a little bit of lining showing. It's not a problem, just take it it all out and then just give it a quick trim the way we're doing this we don't have to do a separate lining um, and then bag it out i hope you do give it a go because i think you'll really enjoy doing this one right so what i'm going to do now is turn it to the inside i know i've got all that zip still attached but i'm going to clip uh, push this to the inside and I'm going to stitch right along the edge of that zip there leaving my zipper foot on but I'm going to up my stitch length to about 3.5 I do find it easier to use the stiletto when I'm um, doing this bit down as I go up. Can you see all right? Just taking it about an inch or so at a time. So when I take that out, you can see that it, all the uh, seams are, that was exposed are now covered. And on the outside, you've got it all stitched down and you've got a nice quarter of an inch seam allowance. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull that. In fact, no, I'm not. I'm not going to do that yet. I'm going to do it after. I'm going to pull the other side around and I'm going to line it up on this zip here. You could put a mark on your zip at both sides. I'm just going to eyeball it. Put your edges together and place that zip at the same part so that this side is equal to the other side. And we're going to stitch again along that zipper tape, making sure your lining is at the same place as your main fabric. It's a lot easier if you've got your fabric quilted before you make these rather than trying to quilt the pieces together. Our bobbins complaining. I will just sort my bobbin out. Pop it back in. Here we 
whenever I have any problem with this. <laughs> Do a live and it's playing up. Right, start again. Don't know what it did that for. Better. So again, I'm going to use the stiletto to just make sure all those edges are level. I will go around all, uh, go through all the comments later on um, to make sure I've not missed anything. And if I have, I will try and catch up with them tomorrow. But I hope some of you can join me on Friday at 3 p.m. And we'll have a go at doing these sweatshirts. Taking it round to the opposite end. Oh, my thread's come undone. I bet some of you tried telling me that, didn't you? <laughs> Let's put my needle up then. You are playing up tonight, aren't you? right back to where it decided to play up it's because I said it were a nice easy project and it is actually So now what we're going to do is cut those threads off. We're going to put the zip up so that it's inside the um, pouch. I'm going to stitch the ends together so they can't come undone about an inch or so down. So I've got a bit of space to work with. Stitch over that to keep them together. I'm just going to trim that zip off. Right, so I am going to open that up. This is why I've sewn those ends up. Um, somebody's been on about the machines. I'll catch up with that after it's gone a bit pale so I can't see it. So I've opened this up so now I can see how to stitch this one down. So again, if you've got any that you need to trim off, just give that a little trim. It's, it's not really a problem, I've got to say. Um, but just turn that to the underside and stitch along the very edge of the zip tape there. Because you've left yourself that little bit extra, you can get in easy enough. Do you know what I didn't do? I didn't put my stitch length down for that first zip. It's only if I need to be okay. So, taking it about... An inch at a time, something like that, you know, take your time with it. Stiletto really helps. I'm just wondering if you might be better off at the other side. Because I've got my arm in the way, haven't I? I'll try that next week. I dabbled in small items. Nappy pouches and double bibs, then jump straight into the tape. That's the way to go, Kayleigh. I have actually got um, a bit of advice here if anybody can help me. We've got a new puppy coming in um, about five weeks, and I wanted to make some puppy pads. Uh, reusable ones. Has anybody seen what they're made of? I'm thinking it's going to be toweling and then some sort of waterproof liner. Um, if anybody's ever made any, could you let me know? Is it an extra wide? It is a, yeah, it's number five zip. Um, it's just a little bit there. 
so yes it is a number five zip you can see the zip tape there um, you can do it with the normal zipper if you're not going to be using the pouch over and over and over again if it's not going to be in regular use yeah you're fine to do that right what I'm going to do now is I'm going to zip pull the zip up and I'm going to open out those in fact I'm going to do this one first because this one's easier because it's already connected I'm going to open out those sides and make sure that zips in the middle there I'm going to take my um, zipper foot off I haven't got any um, pinners here I'll just put a, pop a pin in there to hold that while I uh, change my foot put my normal foot on machine is messing about again Yeah, I do tend to use the number five zips for uh, pouches and things as I think they're just going to last that bit more and be able to use a little bit more. I'll put my needle back into the central position. Right, so what I'm going to do now is, if you can see from the back part there, I'm going to stitch all the way across here and catch all those edges in together. So I'm going to do it from the back because this is why it needed to be shaped um, not totally square but what you can do is just stitch across and then cut it. It's easier to do it this way than to try and shape it to the correct shape. Just take it steady across your zip. Trim off the excess there. Go to the opposite side, pull those sides open, put the central bit together and put it against the bottom seam there. It is a bit fiddly because the zip's open here, but make sure it's gonna be enough to catch in there. And if you want to pin it, pin it. I'm just gonna hold it and we're going to stitch across that end as well. Just make sure you've not got too much zip in there. And hold those bits together. A clip would probably help at this point. But I'm just going to hold it. Let's uh, do it on a win and a prayer. Can't be bothered to go over there from the clips. You can always unpick it, eh? So just make sure those zip teeth are together. Do you know what would make it easier if I actually... Oh, no, I can't. I was going to say pull the zip together, but then the zip would be on the wrong piece. Ah, oh dear. Must be tired. That should do it. Straight across those zip teeth. Before we bind it, we'll make sure it's right anyway. Ah, it's got caught a bit there. Get my little picker out. My best mate. Can you see Bobbin watching up here? And pull it up before puppy pulls. Right, I shall have a look at that lane, thank you. I will have a look back through. Um, yeah, I just want to make some so that... Um, I don't like to think of using all those puppy pads and, you know, thinking about the environment. I would like to um, have a go at making my own. Hopefully it's not going to be in them for long, or using them for long. It's been quite a difficult decision, but Mark really wants another puppy. Um, I'm still very, very sore from Molly, but I'm thinking it may help heal, you know, the heartache. So that's the um, zip part done. I'm just going to trim that off level. I wouldn't normally leave this much extra zip, but I know some of you may think if I only leave a little bit that you've got to do the same. Uh, oops, can you just trim off? Oh, I'm going to cover it up. So um, the reason I've left so much extra is because it's just that bit easier to do it that way. I am a bit, bit tighter than that. Right, so this is the binding. Um, that I folded in half what I'm going to do is I'm going to place it 
about a centimetre over the edge at each end and I'm going to stitch across. Making sure you catch all those edges in. Trim the excess off. The other bits for the other side. I can use as much as I want on this because I've obviously got enough left over. So just place it against the edge. So all we need to do now is bring the binding up. I'm going to fold that edge in tuck the corner down, bring the top over and stitch that binding down all the way across. I'm going to use my stiletto because I do find it helps enormously. If you struggle with this on your machine, hand sew it. It's not a problem, it's only a tiny bit, there's only about four inches. You know, just give it a hand sew. Be okay on this machine though, so and then when you get to the other side, tuck that in as well. I've got a bit too much here, so I'm just going to trim some off, bring the ends in, wrap it around, bring it in, and then tuck the edges up and cover all those raw edges up, and then just stitch across. and there you've got your binding all the way across repeat on the other side just trim the edges off so I bring this end over tuck that corner in bring the sides up and stitch all the way over We've got a nice pallet finished. I always underestimate how long these are going to take. So I chat that long at the beginning. Took it all in. Took the last pieces in. I don't know how we manage without stilettos for this though. Because it just really, really helps. If you haven't got one, try it. They are amazing. Trim all those little threads off. And then open the zip up inside turn it to the right side push your corners out put your zips in and there you've got a lovely little pouch oh it looks lovely because you've just got those two little peacocks on that side with the heart and you've got your peacocks here with your rainbow zip and when you open it up it's got that lovely flash of colour on the inside and it's just bang on eight o'clock did I do well oh brilliant Heather give it a go I hope you all give it a go and show me your um your makes and I'll tell you what I'll do is I will make one up and I will send one to somebody I'm not sending this one because I love it this one's mine <laughs> but yes I will send one out um, Kayla you'll probably be getting one for uh, your prize so thank you very much uh, everyone thanks for watching keep safe 
and I don't know if you're on mum but uh, I, my mum's having the Covid injection tomorrow so I'm so relieved, that's uh, brilliant news. I hope it goes well for you mum, let me know. Um, but thank you and I'll see you all on Friday, three o'clock. I will be putting a message on. Uh, shall be trying to make one. Good, brilliant Marilyn. Great demo Ali, I'm projecting some family and brand new Oh Kayleigh, come round, I've got loads. <laughs> One day, you know, you'll be able to come round and we'll be able to sew together. That Won't that be a novelty, eh? Right, thanks everybody. Take care. See you on Friday. Bye.